Okay, uh, I have to admit uh, to having a favorite I, of all the capstones, I think this is the best, coolest name. <laughs> so, uh, it's got foo. Uh, it's got foo. <laughs> yeah, it's got foo. Uh, so, uh, next up is uh, Alex, who's going to present Foovy. I, I just like saying it. Hello, everyone. Uh, as Professor Kralowitz said, uh, I'm Alex Christie, and uh, my senior capstone is Foovy. So, I am a really big movie person. Uh, it's kind of been a thing for me and my entire family. We always kind of go and see the brand new movies that come out, as well as when we're together. It's kind of like a family thing that we do. So we always try to find a movie every night to kind of like spend time with each other, which is kind of weird because when you think about it, it's not like actually spending time with each other. We're just kind of in the same area. But uh, we really enjoy watching them, and we actually have really in-depth discussions about them. Uh, so this past summer, when I was trying to think of an idea, um, we spent a lot of time actually searching for movies on Netflix, the internet, Comcast, Hulu, Amazon Prime. We have all those. We probably don't need all those, but we do. Um, and it ended up being that it was really hard to kind of like decide on a movie because it took us so long to search through kind of all the options they have that by the time we figure something out, it was already pretty much time to go to bed. And it's like, okay, it's midnight. Probably shouldn't watch a movie now. Should probably hit it, especially since everyone has work in the morning. So I wanted to solve it, solve the, pro the problem of finding searches quicker instead of having to kind of like click on every single movie. Like um, Comcast has it to where you could go to a specific genre but then you have to keep like clicking over to go to each movie, then you have to hit enter on the movie to try to find any information about it, and then you have to hit back, and then do the same thing over and over again. Which, I mean, for some people, that's probably okay, because they probably don't do it very often, but uh, for uh, me and my family, that was rather annoying. Uh, Netflix and Hulu also do similar things. So I wanted to make it just quicker, just a single click, and you kind of get all your information at once. I wanted easy information gathering, which is kind of how I end up doing that through a single click. And then I wanted more movie and TV show options. So Netflix only has Netflix stuff. Hulu only has Hulu stuff. Same thing with Amazon Prime and Comcast. Although I guess Comcast has a deal with Netflix to where they actually will uh, like show their shows when you search stuff up, but you can only access it if you have Netflix. So uh, this is actually what Netflix uh, looks like on my computer. So you kind of you have two genres here, just what I was scrolling through, and here here's just a limited set of movies that have for each genre. And you can click on them and then look at your description, and then Netflix also has a separate kind of like genre page that you can go to, and then go kind of like more in depth in the genres and get a lot more options. So my solution to that was building kind of like my own website which the users will kind of select some search criteria, and then it'll return a list of the movies and TV shows with their descriptions. So um, some of the major components in my website are obviously the website itself, and that has a front end and a back end. Uh, the front end is manipulated with uh, CSS and HTML, and then kind of part of the back end is part of JavaScript, which also is kind of included in the front end. But JavaScript makes the website interactive, which is like you're allowed to click on links or different tabs and stuff like that. Um, another big portion of my project was an API, which is an application program interface. And I found a really good definition for it, actually, on, I think it was uh, dictionary.com. It's a set of functions and procedures allowing the creation of applications that access the features or data of an operating system, application, or other service. And then another big portion of my project was Firebase database. So a big part of my project was actually research because when I was thinking of projects, I was thinking of stuff that I've known that I can do, that I know I can do, and I realized that that wasn't really cutting it for me because I wasn't really going to enjoy the project if it's something that I've already done before. So instead I chose to do something completely new. I actually have no experience whatsoever doing any of the things that I ended up doing for here. Um, I've never made any kind of web page before, or used HTML, CSS, or JavaScript for that matter. 
So a lot of it was brainstorming to actually come up with this idea. Then once I did that, I had to write out what this project was actually going to be, and that's when we wrote our thesis proposals. And then um, after that, it was a lot of research into how to actually make a website, because like I said, I've never actually done that before, so this was kind of a big deal for me. And a lot of my time went towards that, especially in the first semester, so I didn't do as much coding as I would have liked to first semester. And then I had to do a lot of research into APIs, because there's a lot of them out there, and they all do a bunch of different things. And then I had to start learning JavaScript, CSS, and HTML. So once I kind of got my ideas and what I was going to do and the APIs I was going to use, I had to make my basic web page. And I chose, chose to make a really basic web page to where I could just display some information that I was able to get from an API. So I ended up just adding one as kind of like a practice so I could get the information. I could kind of display it in different ways or get different portions of the information. And once I accomplished that, I tried to add different APIs, but I actually ran into some big problems with my APIs. Um, some of them uh, were no longer kept up. So like the people stopped actually updating them or allowing access to them. And then a lot of them were also, uh, they're kind of like reserved for commercial use, which is like, used for big companies for money and stuff like that. Unfortunately, that was not what I was doing. This is all personal. So I was actually not allowed to use a significant number of the APIs that I had originally looked into using. So then I had to kind of come up with some search options, which then also took away some of my API options because when I wanted to search, I wanted to search by genres, but a lot of the APIs don't actually allow that. You have to search by a particular movie title or ID. And that's not really what I was looking for. And then I had to add Firebase to my website so I can give a login option and allow them to hold reviews. So this is kind of my progression, just in a chart. So I started with just a little basic web page. I mean, there was no color, nothing on it. It was just a simple header and then uh, like a paragraph where I could put the information. Then I added one API. And then I started manipulating that the information on that API so I can try to experiment with the ways I wanted to display it. And then once I accomplished that, then I started actually making my website and that's when I added my different options for people to search through. And then I added different APIs and then Firebase. So I'll give you a demo of my project real quick. It's over here. Okay, so this is Fubi. Just reload that real quick, make sure it's up to date. So, Fubi, where we help you find movies and TV shows, but mostly movies. Um, so, I have a little about the website. Uh, I was debating on adding like stuff about me, but I kind of chose against it because I guess I don't really want a lot of people to know a lot of things about me. <laughs> so, I have my different tabs here. I have movies, TV shows, and my account page. So, I'm just noticed there's a, a D up there for some reason. That's kind of interesting. I was I accidentally clicked the button when I was running a test on it earlier. So uh, for movies, so I had the genres here. And kind of one of the things I want to do in the future is actually I kind of want to reformat this because I ended up not really liking this format here. You can go ahead and click action. So this gives us all movies. So whether it's Netflix, Hulu, if it's in movie theaters, if it's on Comcast, doesn't matter. The API I'm using gives me every movie option. And so this is actually already in like ratings order. So from most popular to least popular. And I was originally actually gonna have a ratings tab, but then like I said, this, this API actually already does it for me, which is kind of cool. But that's also why you see Avengers Endgame in the first spot, because that is the top movie as of right now. And what's actually kind of interesting, so you can just scroll through it. Uh, surprisingly, actually, a lot of the top movies are all Marvel movies. So, I mean, personally, I'm a big fan of Marvel, so I'm okay with that. Um, so right now, I'm only getting one page of information. So this API gives a lot of information. Like I said, it gives all movies pertaining to this genre, not just what Hulu has or just what Netflix has or just what's in theaters. So. I'm kind of limited by the amount of things I can access on this API, which is kind of annoying, but if I go over a certain amount, they will start 
charging me for every single kind of like request I make. Um, and they reserve the right to choose how much is too much, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> so yeah, I'm only getting one page, but there are a lot of pages worth of information. So I, so I have a clear button instead of just being able just to click on a new one. And then, so I have all these different genres here. Does anyone have a genre they want to look at right now? Just out of curiosity. Sorry, it's kind of hard to see. Crime. Crime? Nice. <laughs> so these are the top crime movies at the moment. Um, so yeah, John Wick Chapter 3 did come out today. Uh, and then you got your Detective Pikachu. I actually haven't really heard of a lot of these. Kind of cool. Oh, the Fate of the Furious is over here. So, and it's giving them all their all their descriptions. <laughs> so, does anyone want to choose a release here? I I only chose to do. 2000 to 2019 because that's more of like a personal choice because those are the only ones that kind of <laughs> pertain to me. Just the only ones that I can like kind of remember. Um, and like I said, it also kind of depends on all the information I can access. So I only chose to do these years. Does anyone want to choose a year to kind of look at? Harry was a good year for movies. Within the 2000s, right? Prior to 2000. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's see. Uh, 2007. 2007. Ooh, dead end. Right, Only one I know so far is Harry Potter. Yeah. Cool. Pirates. Pirates Caribbean. Hey, Silver Surfer. Ratatouille. Ratatouille. Excellent. Wow, it came out in 2007. Uh-huh. So like I said, this is only one page of the information. I could potentially retrieve more, but I don't want to risk getting charged a bunch of fees. <laughs> So I can also do TV shows. It's pretty much the same same kind of thing. Does anyone want to choose a TV show for me to click on? Family. Family TV shows. Yeah. Pokemon up there. That's cool. Duck Tales. Hannah Montana. Cool. Yeah. Let's see. Um, and then I also have the same thing for release dates. I don't know if someone wants to choose a date just for fun. 2012. 2012. Lego Ninjago, that's cool. So it's actually really interesting, or one of the funny things about this is that, so since it's on popularity and movies can be multiple genres, and same thing with TV shows, that actually <laughs> look at movies here and then you choose action, so there's Avengers, that's Shazam, clear, if I look at you got Avengers again, and then uh, I think it was in Sci-Fi Me, and you got Avengers again. <laughs> so I thought that was kind of funny, and actually I didn't pick up on that originally. Um, I also accidentally, when I was looking at, up genres, I was actually putting it in the wrong place, so it was actually taking the genre as the movie title. So when I did action, it popped up a bunch of movies, action movies, that all had action in their name, which was kind of weird and I didn't actually uh, see that at first. I thought it was just kind of like an alphabetical order. So that was kind of a funny situation I ended up having. Then my account here. So I have a login or a create account. Since I already have an account, I will log in. Sorry, sometimes you gotta give a sec. Sometimes Firebase is a little slow. Come on. There we go. So and it tells me that I've logged in. I'll clear it, and then I can move down here. Or I can create an account if I wanted to. So I can move down here to write a review. Uh, has anyone seen a movie recently? Or wanna say a movie that you saw recently? And, uh, <laughs> Quick, you raise your hand first. Huh? Uh, mid-90s. That's a movie title? 
Great movie about the 2000s. <laughs> so, did you have uh, any anything to say about the movie? Was it good, bad? Uh, it was a really honest recount of a 13-year-old's uh, what's it called? Rebellion, I guess. Yeah. Starts hanging out with uh, skaters, doing drugs, <laughs> drinking. It's, it's a pretty cool movie, but very honest. Okay, and then I could submit the review here. And I'll let me know that it has been submitted. And then I can see reviews. So actually I've already done multiple reviews and uh, I accidentally left my testing ones in there so I apologize. Um, so, and your review is here, in 90s. So I was actually kind of disappointed with how I formatted this because when I actually enter my information into Firebase, I entered it in like a really weird way. So when I pull the data, it's all just one giant like snapshot that it's pulling. And uh, I was kind of having issues trying to separate it. So I kind of just left it as well as and put it on there. But as like a future work, I'd like to be able to take the movie title and kind of display it how I displayed my genres and my uh, re release dates. Kind of how it had that like gradient for the movie title and then the box for the review. That's how I would have liked to do it. And that's how I would like to do it in the future. So. Okay. So that was my demo. So, uh, so what I learned, uh, I learned a lot. And there was a huge learning curve for me. Um, like I said, CSS H and HTML are the two big things for a website. Like HTML is kind of like the skeleton. And then CSS is what gives its its color and like kind of its different fonts, and then I had to learn JavaScript, which is how I ended up actually accessing the APIs and Firebase, and it also helped me helped me make it interactive. So like when I clicked on the buttons, that's when it brought up the information. Um, and then I had to learn how to actually use Firebase, which was kind of a doozy for me. Uh, I kind of struggled with that for a bit. Same thing with actually the documentation for the API. For some reason, the documentation was it was it was really weird. It was kind of hard to find, so that that took me longer than I expected, unfortunately. So, and those were kind of my issues for it. And my future plans, I'd like to implement like a watch list. So, on the screen where you saw like the genres and the release dates, you'd be able to click on one of those cards, is what I ended up naming it, and that'll be added to a list that sh that will connect to your account after you log in. And then I also want to implement a way for the users to see where movies and TV shows are available, which is actually what I kind of started my project with. But Netflix and Hulu are very stingy with their information, and they don't want to give that out for free. So I had to actually change my project to what it is now. So I'd like to potentially take this farther and actually, I guess, get this commercial use and actually be allowed to access the Netflix and Hulu APIs. So my reflection. I struggled a lot with this project, and it, it really stressed me out. Kind of all summer, I was like kind of freaking out because I didn't really have an idea. Then when I finally got the idea, it's like, wow, this is just so much. It's like, like I said, I've never done any of this before, so it looked really big for me. And so, uh, thank you, thanks to Professor Kavalowitz, I literally took two days because that's what he recommended to actually kind of think about what this project meant to me, and. One of the big things I actually realized about myself is that I need to take it one step at a time. I know a lot of people could sit there and say, oh yeah, I'll spend this many hours on it a day. I am not one of those people. If I do that, I end up getting like really sidetracked and doing stuff that doesn't actually pertain to the main reason, like main point of me working on it, which is actually, I ran into those issues while learning JavaScript and HTML and CSS. I got really sidetracked and spent a lot of hours not even really working on the project, but just like, playing with the language. And then another thing, um, you need to be proud of what you accomplish. Uh, looking at all these thesis presentations, they're fantastic. All of you guys have done a really good job with them. And looking at those, it made me really nervous for mine, because it's like, wow, it's like these ones are so great. How am I going like, to compare to everyone else? And I realized that 
this, what I did was a lot for me, which is why I need to be proud of what I've done instead of comparing to everyone else. And that kind of leads me to my second point, which is actually, I heard this from the Concepts of Physical Fitness teacher. Uh, there's uh, Coach Doman. You guys are on the soccer team. He is the coach. Uh, his big thing is everyone is different, and everyone truly is. Everyone comes from different backgrounds, so people have a lot of different experiences, especially with coding. And then the last reflection I had is that I need to celebrate the small victories, because actually, from an article I recently read in Software Development, uh, if you don't kind of like celebrate what you've already done, you kind of get burned out, which I did find myself getting very burnt out while working on this, which kind of relates to Professor Cavallo was saying, like, if you got to start off loving it, because by the end, you're really going to hate it. And so that kind of goes into the celebrating the small victories, which I kind of learned towards the end, luckily. So I did end up applying that. And so that made everything a lot better for my project. Because when I was able to finally get the API work, it was one of those where it's like, yes, it's like finally, it's big breakthroughs for me. So you really got to celebrate those. Otherwise, I just kept coding. And it's just like, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> and yeah, are there any questions? How much is the uh, Netflix API cost if you want to be able to get as many requests as you want? From um, I didn't get far enough to get a price. Okay. <laughs> Maybe variable, depending on how yeah, you um, yeah, I, like I said, I didn't make it far enough into their kind of like process to actually even see the pricing for it. So I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be pretty, pretty hefty amount of dollars. But I mean, the, some of the normal ones I was doing were it was anywhere from like 10 to $50 a month, depending on how many like requests you want. And then if you go over, it's like adding an extra penny every time for every request you go over. So. Okay, well done. <laughs>